everyone, let's take a look at our multi first multiple answer question. So two statistics teachers recorded test scores on the final exam that was taken at the end of the course. Both classes covered the same material prior to the final exam. The scores for each of the two classes are shown below. So just in reading this, I can see that we have some kind of variable that is the final exam score, right? So test scores on this final exam. I wasn't told if the units were points or percentages, uh, but that's okay. I'll just, I'll take note that my variable here is uh, score on final exam. And it is a numerical variable. I'll keep that in mind. And okay, I'm given, not only am I given the raw data for each of these, they actually, I, I gave you the box plots as well. I could have made those box plots on my calculator. They would have been horizontal right, rather than vertical, but same idea would have happened. All right, let me get rid of my little notes here, and let's see what we're being asked to do. Oh, just as a note, I do see that teacher has got an, a little outlier there. Oh, are there any outliers? Show calculations leading to your conclusion. Okay, so I will do that in a moment, and then I need to compare some socks and figure out which class appears to have the higher scores. And this is a multiple answer, so I will take a look at each of the options for A, B, and C and circle one of those answers. Okay, so in terms of the, are, there, are there any outliers show calculations leading to your conclusion, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get my calculations. I'm going to run one var stats. I'm going to put this data, I'll put this into L1 and this into L2. I'm going to run one var stats and actually make my safety zone. So let me get ready for that here. Let's go ahead and I'll put teacher A in a moment on this side and I will do teacher B over here. And just because they're asking me to compare socks, I'm gonna write down a bunch of stats that I get from this, not just my outlier calculation. So the first thing I'm gonna need to do is find the IQR on each of these. And that's always going to be Q3 minus Q1. And again, I'm going to get that from one var stats. So let me go ahead and run one var stats off of L1, and then I'll do it again off of L2. And I'm going to use the calculator app here rather than my physical calculator, only because the app and the physical calculator are pretty similar. So let me go ahead. I preloaded all of my um, data into my list, so you can see it in here. right? So there's L1 and L2 with that respective data. So let me go ahead and run one var stat, so stat calc one, and feed it L1. And I'm looking at, okay, I see Q1 is 72. I see Q3 is 82. I'm also gonna write down the mean, the standard deviation, the min and the max. I'm just gonna, and the median. I'm gonna keep track of all that data, just so I, just so I have it. So let me head back to my notes, and let's go ahead, and I'm gonna take notes here. So for teacher A, all right, so I'll take note of Q1. So Q1 in this case we said was 72, Q3 was 82. I'm gonna use that in the outlier calculation in a moment, but I also wanna take note that I saw the median was 76.5, the min was 42, and the max was, in this case, it was 96. One other thing I wanna just take note, I saw the standard deviation at 14.2. So I'm just gonna keep all of that data in mind and I'm gonna do the same thing for teacher B over here, just so I can use it later. So we'll go Q1, we'll go Q3, the median. So this is almost like the five number summary just in a different order. Actually, it is the five number summary in a different order. Oh, you know what I just realized? I did not put the mean here. So let me go ahead and put that X bar on this side was 75.1. So let's get S and X bar. All right, let's run this. I'm gonna run one of our stats off of L2 and see what we get. So let me switch this now over to L2. And it looks like my mean is about 72.6. My standard deviation is 12.08. And I can see my five number summary there. So I'm gonna write all of this out just so I have it on my notes. So my Q1 in this case was 63.5. My Q3 was 82.5. My median was 71. My min was 55. My max was 95. My standard deviation over here, I think we said was 12.08. And my mean was 72.6. All right, so I just got a bunch of stats. I'm gonna start with 
the outliers because that's what I was asked. I'm going to squish this in just a bit so we can see it. So for teacher A, here we go. This would have been 82 minus 72, which would have been 10. I need to multiply that number by one and a half. That'll get me to 15. Oops, I need to multiply 10 by one and a half. That is 15. And then I need to subtract that number, 15, from Q1, but add it to Q3. So if I'm looking at this, this is going to be 72 minus 10, and this is going to be 82 plus 10. So this is going to leave me with, oh, geez, I just realized my error. Not 10, 15, right? I got to actually put the right number. All right, so 72 minus 15, that's going to leave me with 57. Uh, 82 plus 15 is going to be 97. There's my safety zone. All right, so let me write here safety zone. And let's see what we can find out. So if I think about my min, my min in this case was 42. Ooh, 42 is outside the safety zone, right? So I know I have at least one outlier, and I, I can see it right here at 42. Let's just take a look at the next highest non-outlier. So we had 42 is the min, and as I go through this, it looks like 59 is the next lowest value, but 59 is in the safety zone. So I only have that one outlier on the low side. And then my max here was 96, which is also in the safety zone. So I have one outlier at 42. All right, and then let's try this now for teacher B. So here we would have had, and let me scroll back up, we would have had 82.5 minus 63.5, and that's going to leave me with 19. All right, and then I'm going to multiply this by one and a half. Oops, let me write the phrase IQR. So one and a half times 19 is going to give me 28.5. So now I'm going to subtract that number from Q1, but add it to Q3. And this time I'll actually add the right number. Um, so we would have 63.5 minus 28.5. I would have 82.5 plus 28.5, and that would give me a safety zone. Oh, this one's large of 35 to 111. So there's my safety zone. All right, and now let's take a look at its min and max. So the min here was 55. The max here was 95. Both of those are in the safety zone, so there are no outliers for this particular teacher, which is fine. Let's just go ahead and take a look at what my options are. So I want to look, I want to see some type of work for my options in A. So let's go take a look. So if I look at the first option, um, they're only doing one set of um, outlier calculations, right? So this was the outlier calculation for teacher A, but it's missing teacher B. Oh, that's me trying to spell missing. So this is not it. This is not correct. And then on the flip, this is, right, this is now, this is the teacher B calculation here, but I don't see anything with teacher A. So this, again, not it, not it. At least here, we have a couple of, we have the outlier calculations, but if I look at this bottom one, they're getting a lot of outliers and we did not have that. So we had 42 was an outlier for teacher A and there were no outliers for teacher B. So that's going to be my answer. All right. And now if, as we start to look at socks, let's see if we can figure these out. So if I'm, I'm going to go back up here and just start to take a look at my socks. So let me go ahead and I'll try and scribble this in here and we'll see what we get. All right, so if I wanna take a look at my socks, to me, both of these graphs are roughly symmetric. So I'm gonna put, just as notes, they're both roughly symmetric. If I wanted to officially figure this out, and let me get a different pen color here, I can compare the mean and the median. And if we look at teacher A, the mean is a little bit less than the median. So if anything, for teacher A, it skews left just a bit, right? And if I compare mean and median, what do we got? 72.6 here compared to 71. So this one, if anything, would skew right. And again, these are just slightly. I, I would actually say they were both roughly symmetric, but I'll keep that in mind. For outliers, oops, we just realized that only teacher A has an outlier. 
Oh, and if you can hear my neighbor's dog barking, so can I. <laughs> All right. Um, and then for the center, as we look at the center, I mean, the centers are pretty close to each other, 72.6 and 75.1. And if we look at the medians, we've got 76.5 against, <clears throat> excuse me, 71. So I would say the mean and median for teacher A is a little bit higher. All right, so teacher A, mean, median, higher. Okay, so we'll keep that in mind. All right, and then in terms of some measure of spread, let's take a look at what we have here. Just taking a look at how wide these box plots are, I can see that teacher A has the larger range. If I wanted to actually crunch the range, I could do that. If I wanted to get the official range, I would just go ahead and I would do um, max minus min. And if I go ahead and do that here, if I did 96, oh, excuse me, if I wanted to get the range, that would be 96 minus 42, and that's going to give me 54. All right, let's see what the range is for teacher B. That would be, where's my max? So 95 minus 55, that would give me 40. So yeah, that's consistent, right? Teacher A has a larger range. All right, so let's take a look at what my options are and compare these, all right? So, all right, both distributions are roughly symmetric. I agree with that, right? They do not both skew right. They do not both skew left. And if anything, we said teacher A skews left, whereas teacher A skews right, so this is not it either. So this has to be our option, right? And we already did the outlier calculation. We saw only teacher A has outliers. We saw that the median for teacher A was higher than teacher B, so we're gonna go ahead and go with that. It's not lower, right? The median for teacher B is not higher. Both distributions have the same median. That's not true either, so these are incorrect. Uh, teacher A did have the larger range, uh, teacher B does not have a larger standard deviation, teacher A does not have a larger IQR, and teacher B does not have a larger variance. So there is my answers. All right, and then the last thing they asked us to look at here, let me scroll back up, was which class appears to have the higher scores. So if you were in one of these classes, which teacher looked to do better? Well, to me, if I just look at the median, it looks like teacher A did better because in this case, with the context of test scores, higher scores are better. So I'm gonna go with teacher A. They had the higher median and the higher mean. You could make a justification, I guess at best you could say maybe teacher B had the higher minimum, but that would be, um, that would be the most I could say if you wanted to justify teacher B. All right, so let's, let's go see what my options are and find the best answer. So teacher A's class appears to have higher scores because the mean and median for students in teacher A's class is higher. Yeah, that's that's literally it. So I'm going to circle that one and then make sure that the rest of them are, are not as good. So teacher B has higher scores because the class has a lower maximum. Um, that's not true. I, I, well, actually, let's make sure. I don't believe teacher B had a lower maximum. And even if it was a lower maximum, or did teacher B have a lower maximum? Let's see, we had what, 96 against 95. Oh, they actually did have a lower maximum. So that part is true, but that doesn't justify why teacher B has better scores. So let me scroll back down. All right, whoops, there we go. So teacher B does not have higher scores because they have a lower maximum, right? Teacher B has higher scores because its Q1 value is lower than that of teacher A. So I, I'm not even sure what that, let's see, teacher B has higher scores because it's Q1 value. Let's go back to it's Q1 value. I know I'm scrolling a bunch. So it's Q1 value was 63.5. All right. And that is lower than that of teacher B. Well, yeah, again, it is lower, but that's not why you would have better scores. Again, I, I agree with the statement that the Q1 for teacher B is lower than the Q1 for teacher A, but that does not justify why teacher B has better scores. If anything, it justifies why teacher A has better scores. All right, so we're going through here. Okay, so I do not, while I agree that this part of the statement is true, I don't believe it justifies this. And teacher A has higher scores because the class has the lower minimum score. And again, 
if you have the lower minimum score, that's not justifying why you had higher scores on average. That's actually against that argument. So we're going to go with C here. So I hope that that helps and clears up um, multiple answer number three. Thanks so much. Bye.